Hello and welcome to another LocoWorks Wednesday video from 00 Rail. Um, today we're taking a look at uh, two different uh, locomotives with uh, two kind of potentially similar problems. Um, the first loco we're looking at is uh, D6704. This is a uh, class 37 in uh, B or green. And uh, this loco is a very nice loco. Um, I got it on eBay about a year and a half ago. And uh, it started out working intermittently and then just kind of basically stopped dead. And so um, what basically happens is as soon as you apply power to it, it just doesn't do anything at all. And uh, we're going to go and, and take a look at that. Um, now I've already removed it uh, from the chassis. Um, it's very simple. There's a couple of clips. There's one there and one there. You basically just pry it away from the chassis and it pops right out. Um, this here is the uh, chassis itself. Uh, it's got a pretty heavy weight in the center here as well as a bit of tape for the wiring. So what I did was pull this piece of tape back um, so that I could remove the uh, wiring from the chassis. And basically what I did was I dropped um, this out of the uh, chassis and it's quite simple. There's uh, two tabs on either side. There's one here and one here. You just basically turn it at an angle, push this one and it drops out. Um, the other side has a similar set of tabs and you basically do the same thing and then you basically just very gently um, will you can fit the thing through the uh, one end of the chassis like so and then when you get it out you just drop it out the other side and voila you get your, your two motor ends out. Um, so I have no idea what's wrong with this. Um, I know that there's uh, no movement whatsoever. Um, I did check that there was voltage getting to the motor and there is. So I know that this wire from here to here and here to here is, is okay. Uh, so I suspect there's probably something wrong with the gearing or um, something to that effect. Uh, so we'll go and we'll take a look at that. Um, the other loco that I have here today um, is a uh, class 155 uh, sprinter in uh, metro train livery. And uh, this particular loco, I got it on eBay uh, probably about four or five months ago. And it worked fine for a couple of weeks and then it just stopped dead all of a sudden. So I have a funny feeling that it's probably something simple. Um, so we'll have to go and, and take a look. It could well be a wiring issue. Um, there's quite a few pickups on this as well. So um, the motor was maintained. Uh, so I know that it's not a you know poor maintenance or, or some other issue. Um, so we'll have to go and take a look and see if we can figure out what's going on with that. So uh, first up, we're going to go and take a look at the uh, class 37 here. So um, what we're going to do is uh, we're using the GoPro as well. Uh, so we'll have uh, different angles uh, so you guys can check things out as well. So the um, problem we seem to have here with the motor is that there's like uh, no power going to it at all. Um, we do know that the wiring is okay. We tested the wiring with uh, some uh, multimeter. So uh, what we're going to do next is just inspect the thing for visual damage. So the, there's nothing a, too much to a ring fill motor. Uh, you have uh, your wiring, uh, you have this uh, copper plate here, and you have your gears, and you have your uh, central gear here and your central bearing. You have your springs and your um, uh, carbon brushes. And then in the center here, um, inside the motor, you have the uh, commutator. So, and there's also a magnet in, inside there. So, um, typically, it, it's probably just a loose connection, uh, and we're hoping that's that's all it is. So, um, one thing I did notice when I visually inspected this that the uh, actual gears were a little bit loose, and this particular uh, copper piece was uh, a little bit on the uh, bent side. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove this copper piece and inspect it a little bit closer. So to remove it, uh, we're simply taking the screwdriver and putting it in behind here. This is a flathead screwdriver and basically popping it out on either side. Um, and then it should hopefully just drop right out. Um, you can see there it's decided to uh, drop down inside the... Uh, 
motor, but uh, it's relatively easy. Now you can see that these gears are a little bit bigger uh, than your standard uh, ring field, uh, and this is because this is a newer type of motor, um, but it's basically the same principle. So here you can see um, it's uh, a little bit bent. Uh, you can see here someone's bent it inwards, and I think uh, this was actually installed um, backwards as well, which might have been causing some of the problems. So what we're going to do is just going to go ahead and get um, a pair of pliers and uh, see if we can bend this back into shape. Okay, so if you look at the um, copper plate here, and I'll try to do this as, as easily as I can, um, but if you look at the copper plate, um, basically there's a little lip uh, that's up here, and you might be able to see it, you can see it from the angle if I can move my thumb out of the way. Um, so this little lip that's right here um, is supposed to go and fit in under uh, this clip area right here. Now what appears someone's done is um, they've kind of bent it so that it goes in backwards. Um, so what we're going to do is we're basically just going to bend this thing back into its original shape and uh, hopefully uh, it will uh, work okay. So just to give you an idea of what it's supposed to look like, um, here's a another uh, ring field motor and you can see here uh, these are basically uh, dead flat and it comes up here and it's uh, bent outwards and uh, if you look at the uh, one we have here just if I hold it this way uh, you can see that it's uh, it's not bent that way at all alright so what we're going to do is just uh, use a pair of pliers and very carefully uh, do this hopefully Okay, so we're uh, ready to go here on the test track. Uh, it's all hooked up, so we're just going to give it some power. Uh, oops. Uh, you can see there, uh, it's actually moving, which is good. Um, it's got a uh, track pin wedged in it as well, so it's quite possible, uh, as you saw there, that fell out of it. Um, now that's a Pico track pin, and I don't use those, so it's uh, quite possible that may have been uh, causing a short in there as well. Um, you can see now it's working uh, working pretty well. All right, so um, what we're going to do next is uh, it's, now it's gone from uh, not running at all to working pretty well. Um, that may have actually been the uh, cause of the problem because it wasn't running at all. Um, so it's quite possible that it was uh, shorting it out. Um, but yeah, so it's uh, it's looking pretty good. Um, so what we're going to do next is uh, go ahead and uh, reassemble it and then uh, do a quick another test on the test track and then we'll let it uh, run in. But it looks like we may have a uh, new working class 37 to our fleet. Okay, so while we had... Um inspected the, the motor, it looks like that that uh, track pin was actually stuck to the magnet up inside the motor itself so once it started spinning um, it eventually bent it out of shape and, and knocked it out of there. Um, this uh, copper plating that was uh, kind of bent out of shape is now uh, put in there and is working properly. Um, so what we're going to do now is uh, reassemble it. So I'm going to go and speed it up um, but basically just one thing to note is that um, for the chassis, the big open space, the one that doesn't have the uh, the gap in it there, is uh, the one for the motor. So the motor goes in here, non-motor uh, goes on that side. So uh, let's go ahead and reassemble it.
and there you have it. It's working like a uh, brand new looker, more or less. Oh, it's caught on the uh, cable in there. Uh, yep, it's working like a brand new locomotive. Alright, so uh, next up we're going to take a look at the uh, class uh, 155 and while I'm working on that uh, we're going to let the uh, class 37 here uh, run around the layout. Okay, so uh, next up we have this uh, class uh, 155. Now it is a two car DMU from Hornerby and it's in this uh, regional railways uh, metro train. I believe it's uh, maybe from the Manchester area. Um, and it's a pretty nice logo. Um, so we're going to try to uh, get it working again. Um, so you can see here, uh, it, there's a bit of life in it, but not, not a whole lot. Uh, it wants to move a little bit. And you can see there, there's a bit of a flash. I don't know if you saw that. And inside there, so there's obviously something going on with the motor. So uh, we're going to go ahead and take it apart and uh, see what we can do with it. Yeah, it doesn't smell very good. Uh, looks like there's some kind of a short or some kind of problem with the motor. So uh, we'll uh, see what we can do with it. Uh, the first order of business is going to be to uh, remove it from the chassis. And, uh, exactly how we do that, I'm not quite sure. It doesn't smell very good. All right, so um, I'm thinking. Um, since it's not moving very well, that there, there could be uh, some kind of uh, lubrication or something just stuck. It is starting to move a little bit better. Uh, so we're going to go get the, uh, the oil and uh, see if we can uh, maybe uh, loosen up these wheels and stuff and uh, see if that helps get it rolling. But uh, certainly the smell and there's a little bit of movement, so I'm, I'm suspecting it's probably uh, something's restricting the motor from moving properly. So we will go and take a look. Okay, so it kind of looks like these two screws here uh, might allow you to lift the motor out. So we're going to give that a try and uh, see if it gets us anywhere. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, move the first screw. Use the pliers to be a little fiddly. And now, what you don't want to do is uh, take something apart out of sequence, uh, make it a lot harder to uh, put it back together, and you end up having to tear more of it apart than you want to. Uh, we can see here uh, what this has done is it's actually uh, freed up the motor. Uh, so we can now go and uh, take a closer look at this. So um, here we have the motor assembly, and the motor assembly appears to drop into the gears on the um, the wheels here, and uh, the gears themselves. If I uh, flick the uh, I don't know if you can see it. I think the motor is going to be in the way. Yeah, there you go. Uh, you can see there uh, exactly what's going on. The uh, the wheels connect to the motors. Uh, motor via these two gears right here. And now it's working pretty uh, pretty smoothly. Um, but earlier I did mention that it was uh, 
having its movement restricted. So um, what we're going to do here is we're basically just uh, manually moving the wheels um, to see if there's any kind of restriction, to see if the problem is in the gearing um, or if it's with the motor itself. And I am getting some degree of uh, resistance when I turn these uh, second set of wheels here, but the first set of wheels are okay. Um, teeth in the in the cogs and the gearing look okay, so um, I'm going with there may be some dirt or something in this uh, part of the wheels. We'll have to go and uh, take a closer look. Uh, in terms of the motor, it's a little bit different than what we're normally used to. Um, you saw they're seated basically into those gears, and uh, you have these gears here. Now the motor itself seems to move pretty unrestricted as well. Um, here it's not too bad. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go and test it out a little bit by uh, applying power to it while it's like this and uh, see if we can um, see what's going on. So I'm going to go and basically uh, pick this motor up and the reason I have to leave it attached is so that I can actually uh, see what's going on. I'm also going to pick up the GoPro and move it a little closer so you guys can see what's going on. And then what I'm going to do is basically, uh, hopefully avoiding electrocution here, uh, turn the power on. And you can see there's air. The motor is uh, smoking a little bit, but now it seems to be okay going that way. And we'll go the other way. Now that's at full tilt. That seems to be okay. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and lubricate it up a little bit and see if that helps with the uh, mechanism. But you can hear there it's uh, moving pretty okay. Um, it is smelling pretty badly though and now it's deciding not to move. So it could just need some lubrication. So we're going to go ahead and uh, lubricate it up a little bit and get it running smoothly and then uh, reassemble it and hopefully uh, that has fixed the problem. on the track here and you can see um, it's been lubricated up and it's moving a lot freer than it was before um, you can see there so um, what we're going to do next is uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, power it back up and see if it spins now, I've turned off the class 37 that was running in above um, you can see there yeah. it's still not Still not running very well, so I'm kind of hoping that if I let it run for a minute or two, it might start working properly. Maybe a loose connection. Now, unfortunately, that's running at almost full tilt. Now, I may have to dismantle the motor to get it working properly, so we'll just wait and see.
still not uh, very healthy, so I'm gonna go and uh, see if I can uh, clean it up further and see if we can get it moving a little bit better. Okay, so um, I believe I've uh, figured out the problem. Um, a little bit of trial and error, and uh, I've uh, basically figured it out. So this um, bottom cog uh, that's right here, uh, the larger one, um, it's uh, connected to the motor via a screw, and uh, that screw, you saw me uh, apply some lubricant to it, as well as uh, tighten it slightly, and um, apparently just uh, adjusting that and getting it, um, I had to turn it maybe like five or six uh, uh, revolutions, and uh, now it's working pretty well. Uh, so it looks like the gear may have not been uh, fully engaged. Um, you can see there it's working pretty well. So uh, let me go and stop it here and just show you the uh, actual screw itself. So uh, if I pull this out of the way, I'm going to pick up the GoPro and just uh, point it out to you. So uh, you can see here, um, it's uh, that screw right there, so I can actually quite straight down shot so it's that one right there that I tightened and uh, that seemed to fix the problem so um, I'm gonna do um, a little bit more testing on it uh, just to make sure uh, that it's working okay and then uh, I'll reassemble it and uh, we'll do a few more tests on test track and then we'll see if it survives um, half an hour or so on the um, double rail layout Alright, so I'm uh, reasonably happy that that's working, so uh, let's go and uh, put the uh, chassis back on, or the, the body shell back on it, and uh, go uh, run it up on the layout. Alright, so it sounds uh, pretty decent to me, so uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, test it out on the layout. We're uh, over here at the layout, and uh, we've got the Class 37 that's been running in for quite a while now, and it seems to be working pretty well. Uh, so this is uh, D6704. It was the uh, first loco uh, in this today's video that we fixed. Um, wasn't anything seriously wrong with it. Uh, it wasn't working at all, it was basically shorted out. Um, the wiring was fine, uh, we did discover that the copper uh, clip for the rainfield motor was a little bit bent so we fixed that and then uh, once we got it running a little bit um, it kind of spewed out a uh, Pico track pin that looked like it had been stuck inside the uh, 
magnet that, that's inside around the commutator so looks like that might have been uh, causing the problem so it's working pretty well now and it's working like almost a brand new loco so I'm uh, quite pleased with it, it's a bit old but uh, a little bit of weathering and possibly looking adding some lighting to it and it'll be a pretty nice loco so uh, what I wanted to do next was basically just uh, let you guys uh, see it running around the layout for a few seconds and then we'll uh, go test out the uh, class 155 Okay, so uh, there you have it. Uh, the last uh, two passes I did with it, it actually had the high resistance mode on, so it was uh, a little smoother to control, um, but it's working pretty well. Alright, so uh, let's move on to the Class 155. So uh, here we have the uh, Class 155 in the uh, Regional Railways uh, Metro train livery, and uh, basically it's been fixed. Um, we, we tightened that screw on the motor, uh, basically re-lubricated all the motor parts and uh, it no longer has that really bad burning smell which is uh, fantastic and it's working pretty smoothly. Uh, so it looks like it just needed to tweak a little bit and uh, it seems to be working pretty okay now. So um, before I test it with the full train, um, I'm just using the power car. Um, this is an older Hornby model so it only has the uh, tension lock couplings on uh, the front and the back so it doesn't actually need uh, or have any electrical connections to the uh, dummy car so uh, we can run it by itself and uh, kind of just get a kind of general feel to see if it's uh, working okay so uh, we're gonna go ahead and run it a few times and then uh, I'll assemble the whole train and get you guys uh, take a quick look at it and then uh, we'll run it on the layout a few more times So now we have two working locomotives uh, that we didn't have working at the beginning of the evening. Um, these were both locos that were intermittent runners when I got them and they sort of just sat in a pile until I got a chance to get to look at them. And as you can see there, it didn't take very long to uh, troubleshoot and diagnose the problem. And now we have two working locos. Um, so these, I feel both of these were probably locos that people couldn't get working themselves and felt in the need to offload it on somebody on eBay and uh, while I get a good deal for both of them I've got an even better deal now that they're uh, working and in almost brand new condition